The story of the road to Emmaus is one that is very familiar to a lot of us. If that is not a familiar story to you or you need a refresher, take a moment, pause this video and look it up. You can look it up online. You can look it up in your Bible. This is where you'll find it in your Bible. But the story is that these two people were walking along the road and um, all of a sudden they're actually talking about what's been going on in regards to Jesus, that oh, he was this prophet and, and then he died and now his tomb is empty and there are some women wandering around telling this fantastical story about the fact that he has risen. And as they're talking, Jesus walks up, but they don't know it's Jesus. So they start to tell him his own story and what's been happening. They don't recognize Jesus. Now, with our modern day eyes and minds and hearts, those of us who know the rest of the story, it sounds like these guys must have been pretty dense not to know it was Jesus. <laughs> but the truth is, we often don't recognize things we are not looking for. In a world where there is so much happening, there's so much going on, there is so much constant stimulation in our lives, we often miss anything that we are not looking for. So there's a story, something happened, it was a few years ago, it was in the Washington Post, so you know it's true. But there was a violinist who was busking in the DC subway station. I know they don't call it a subway, I can't remember what it is at the moment, but he was playing his violin and he played for about 40 minutes um, and about six people stopped. Uh, he made about 30 bucks and um, it turned out that the violinist was not only Josh Bell, who is a very famous violinist, he was playing a very famous violin and he was playing one of the most difficult pieces there is to play. If you wanted to buy a ticket to hear Josh Bell play, they would start at about a hundred dollars. And all of these people in the underground that day just walked right past him and they never realized that they were witnessing greatness at work because they weren't looking for it. Why would a master level concert violinist be hanging out underground in the subway station? They weren't looking for that, so they didn't see him. They didn't hear him. They didn't notice him. And I think that's why we can't judge the people in the scripture for not seeing that it was Jesus at first. They of course do realize later when he breaks the bread, they realize it's him. But we don't see what we're not looking for. You know, we've almost trained ourselves not to expect too much, not to look for the miracles, not to expect an experience with the holy. And often we see what we want to see. We see what's easy to see. We see the troubled kid in the classroom and we decide he's always going to be trouble. And we miss the signs that he is so brilliant. He just can't sit still because school is boring him. We have that relative who has just disappointed us so many times. We know they're never going to get their life back together, even though they are definitely showing signs of transforming and changing. We see what we want to see. We have trained ourselves to limit our expectations so that we are not disappointed. Yeah, I bet most of us would fail to see Jesus too. If he showed up in the middle of our workday and interrupted our busy lives to try and have a conversation. How many of you are expecting an encounter with the Holy when you are interrupted by someone you don't even know in the middle of your day? How would our lives look different if we went through them with our eyes wide open, looking for Jesus, expecting to see him around any corner, knowing that he could pop in at any minute, knowing that his light could shine at any point in our day? Because wouldn't it be better to live life that way, expecting to see Jesus at any minute, than living a life in such a way that we missed it when he did?